For many, the name Shirley Temple brings up the cute child star from the 30s, tap dancing with tight golden ringlets in her hair. Most known for her signature song, Good Ship Lollipop, Shirley was the number one box office draw from 1935 to 1938. According to her biography, Shirley was born in Santa Monica, California in 1928. Her father was a banker and her mother was a stay-at-home mom. Despite the depression, which took place a year after her birth, her parents enrolled her at the Magellan Dance School in 1931. At the age of three, Shirley was scouted by Charles Lamont of Educational Pictures, and she was signed onto eight films titled Baby Burlesques, a series of one-reel satire films that placed toddlers in very adult roles and situations. This was the beginning of some questionable practices involving the young girl. Shirley herself criticized Baby Burlesques as an adult, stating that the series was a cynical exploitation of our childish innocence that occasionally were racist or sexist. In 1932, Shirley got her first speaking role in the film War Babies. However, the role wasn't exactly appropriate for a girl of her age. She played an exotic dancer for a group of soldiers, also played by toddlers, and it was in this film Shirley got her first kiss. One role had her saying the line, I'm expensive, and exchanged kisses for lollipops. Sexual themes weren't all that the production of baby burlesques was caught doing. Later in life, Shirley explained the rather cruel treatment the kids received in order to stay in line. They were separated from their parents on set, and if any of them acted out, they'd be placed in a black box on rubber wheels with a little window up high. Within the box was a block of ice they would sit on, and there was no way to get out. The child would be alone, in the dark and very cold. Shirley states in an interview that she got a lot of earaches and styes from being put in the box many times. Despite this weird and creepy start, Shirley was a huge success. In 1934, she landed a role in her first major feature film, Stand Up and Cheer, and later a film that was tailor-made for the young actress called Bright Eyes. After that, her fame skyrocketed. Many of her films depicted her as a motherless orphan, I wish mother was here, who was adopted by a single man, and some people became suspicious and uncomfortable with the context of the films. Shirley would sometimes be written to act rather flirtatious with her adult male counterparts, specifically in the movie Wee Willie Winkle, a problem that was even brought up by British novelist Graham Greene. A quotation of his article in the magazine Day and Night states, Adult emotions of love and grief glissade across a mask of childhood, a childhood that is only skin deep. He also wrote that her outfits in these movies were meant to show off her figure and excite her audience, consisting mostly of clergymen and middle-aged men. A lawsuit was later filed against Green for slandering the film and her name. Problems with predatory acts didn't stop plaguing Shirley when she was just a toddler. In an interview with Larry King, she explains an incident that occurred to her when she was just 12 years old. She and her mother arrived at MGM, supposedly to talk about a film they wanted to put her in. Upon arriving, she and her mother were separated into Arthur Freed and Louis B. Mayer's offices. Alone with Shirley, Arthur exposed himself to her. She states she had no idea what was happening, so she just laughed at him, finding it funny. Arthur, upset with this, kicked her out of his office. As they drove home, she said to her mother, You wouldn't believe what happened to me. And after telling her mother what had happened, she replied, Well, you don't know what happened to me. Not surprisingly, they both decided it was better at Fox than at MGM. Because Fox wouldn't lend Shirley out to MGM, she was passed on for the role of Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and it went to Judy Garland. Some might say she dodged a bullet not being in that movie. Gaining the title of most popular actress in America when she was just a toddler, Young Shirley became victim to some rumors that altered the way people talked about her and sometimes even treated her. Because of her stocky build as a child, a rumor started that she was really a dwarf. She stated in her autobiography that the rumor was so prevalent, especially in Europe, that the Vatican sent Father Silvio Massante to investigate her. 
Accompanying the rumor, people claimed that she had no baby teeth, and that hers were fully grown but filed down to simply look like baby teeth. Of course, this wasn't true. She lost her baby teeth like any other child, but she wore dental plates and caps to hide the gaps in her teeth while filming. One of the young actress's trademarks was, of course, her hair, and even that wasn't safe from the rumors. People claimed that she had to be wearing a wig. Shirley remembers that occasionally, fans would grab at her hair and tug to see if it was true. She wrote that at times she wished it was a wig, because of the nightly regimen she had to endure to maintain the curls, which included weekly vinegar rinses that burned her eyes. To be clear, none of this is Shirley Temple's fault and should not be a slander on her name. She was an incredible child star that accomplished so much at only three years old. She thought a full day's work was normal for a child her age, and should be commended for all that she had to endure. As an adult, she continued to succeed, running for Congress, becoming the United States ambassador to Ghana, and a breast cancer survivor and activist. She was a hard worker, busy up until her death in 2014, when she was still writing her second autobiography. Today, people have wondered if putting children in the spotlight at an incredibly young age is really healthy for them. Having the world watching them grow up seems kind of like an invasion of privacy and forces them to become adults much younger than they should. I can't imagine how much worse it was for children of Hollywood back in the 30s when what they were able to get away with was simply criminal at times. Shirley Temple was able to bring smiles to many faces in her youth. But one has to wonder when watching child stars like her, at what cost to them? Thanks for listening. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, where I do a lot of reviews, horror stories, and documentaries like this one. Till next time, see you later.